Week 10, um, Kit K, theme D, we're looking at the phonology of C. I had a lot of fun with this. I think this is one of those meaty ones that the kids are really going to get into and enjoy. Um, however, it's got a lot of components to it. So depending on what your grade level rep has written up for you, be sure to check those lesson plans. Um, you may not do all of this. I'm just doing an overview. Okay. So first of all, the big ideas in this theme are that most real spelling patterns are about what letters can be used where in a word and in what combination. The patterns for the letter C are a straightforward and easily accessible example of those structural patterns. So this second sort of big idea is important because we're using the letter C in order to teach kids about the patterns and how to ask questions and do some inquiry around letters, around graphemes. Um, but it, it's not that we're trying to memorize C and C in isolation. This is a venue to teach this. And it'll be revisited with other letters and you'll be able to build on this. Phonological patterns, which, I'm sorry, phonological patterns are about which letters we use for which phoneme and the patterns which determine where in a word these letters can be written. Melvin teaches in the theme that the letter C can represent K or S. The letter which follows C governs which of the phonemes it is representing. The C is never written at the end of a base word. We write K if we need K, sorry, we write K if we need K, or C-E if we need S. So you just, I don't know if you can see this very well, but I just did a lot of sort of translation of some important things that happen in this theme, and they are the angle brackets and the slash brackets. You will mess this up. You will get it tossed about in your mouth. It's okay. I'm getting better at it because I'm practicing. Don't expect yourself to be comfortable with it or for your kids. Um, and this is an, a perfect opportunity, and Melvin mentions it too, to do a little bit of practicing. So the angle brackets are the letters or the word that we're going to read out, that we're going to say out. Okay, And you can practice with this list that's on the server. These were recommended by Melvin. The slash brackets indicate we're going to say the sound that's inside there. Okay and those you can practice with as well. He returns us to the idea that we want to watch out for those kids that are adding sounds and not cutting their sounds or clipping their sounds. So these are on there to practice with. If you're doing, during this theme, um, and we just had this conversation before, I don't know that it's vitally important that your kids are using these correctly right now. Some of them are going to start doing it though and we should probably continue talking about it. You want to try to model it as correctly as you can but again, cut yourself some slack. This, is, this isn't easy to get your mouth around. Okay, so Melvin begins the theme by saying the phonology, phonology of C. C is a busy letter. It can represent S or K. And we're gonna study it to learn more about it. This is one of the first diagrams that's inside. Let me move that away. This is one of the first diagrams that's inside the theme at the back. I've remade all of these because the photocopy just wasn't coming out very well, and so it just was easier for me. Um, but they're in the back of the theme. The letter C can represent the sound K, or it can represent the sound S. This is very important, especially at our lower grades, because we don't want to be saying that C is for cat. It, it isn't for cat. C represents two sounds, and this is the beginning of, of a deep exploration of that. After you bring in this chart, you could do some detective work. These are words that he provided that you can go through and ask kids. These are some steps. You say what the word is, cat. You ask someone to spell it out for you, C-A-T. When they come, when we get to the C, I underline it. Then we go back and say, what sound is that representing in this word? Is it a K or is it an S? I went back then and coded the sounds differently based on whichever one they were making. Okay. After you've done this with kids and giving them spelling out practice and some coding work, then you could move into an inquiry where you developed a hypothesis. I think that the letter that comes after the C determines what it says. So let's do a little investigation to see if that happens. Well here, this is an I and it's making a S sound. This is an E and it's making a S sound, and this is a Y that's making this sound for the letter C, leading them to the modified chart, which says the letter C, if it comes before an E, I, or Y, will make this sound in most cases. Then you can go back and test this out. Lots of work here. Kids can come up with a hypothesis. You can feed it to them and then test it out, but an opportunity to model some inquiry. 
The next thing that Melvin moves into is taking those, those words or others and putting them into a Venn diagram so that you can get a visual representation. I made this two years ago, and it's wrong. Not with the words, but with the structure. This should not be laminated because I want to lay, I want to add to it. And the circles should be bigger. So don't make, give yourself some space so that across the year as kids come across other words, you have a place to put them, okay? He gave some starter words in the theme that I put on the server that you could use. And they're good because they do flow into these. You have one side of the Venn, which is the letter C representing the S. The other side of the Venn is the letter C representing the K. And in the middle where it does both, okay? Um, big kids, give them the whole Venn, let them just sort it out, think of words. Little kids, guide them through it, of course. Um, so that's on the server. And then <coughs> we get into looking at the basics of the phonology of the letter K because we know that C and K sit, can both make the K sound. But K is less interesting because K can only make the K sound. Melvin suggests that after you get that sorted, you could move into looking at the letter, the digraph, K-N, which makes the N sound. Whoa, that's crazy, right? Because there's a K and there's a K and now there's an N. So this is good talk about how these letters perform duties or actions. One of the things that he teaches us that I don't know that you need to tell the kids, but the idea that the, um, the K-N inside a word can only make the N sound if it's at the beginning of the base element. You can test this out because some kids will look at the word darkness mm -hmm. and wonder, well, why isn't that making the n sound? But we know from doing a word sum that it doesn't because they're not together. The ness is actually a suffix. Like the double s for double letters. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So that's a really good introduction into the doubling. Yeah. yeah. So, moving forward. So then you get to, well, how do we know? Is it a C or a K that we're going to use to make the K sound? <clears throat> and there are two simple things that kids can remember and an illustration that will help you show them. We avoid using the C as the last, the letter C is the last letter of a base word. We try to use K instead. And as a proficient speller, I can sort of see that because I don't know words that I see the letter C at the end. In my mind, they're always going to be C-E. Um, and that's something that you could tell them. That that would be the only time we'd notice it. There's always seems to be an E there, and then it changes what it's saying. Always use the letter C for this k at the beginning or of or inside a base word unless you are forced to use the k, which brings you back to the start of the theme. And that is that if the C is followed by E, R, or Y, you're forced to use, wait a minute, if the C is followed by E, I, or Y, you are forced to use the letter, and you're trying to make the K sound, right. you're forced to do it because otherwise the C would make the S sound. The illustration does this better than I'm trying to say it. <laughs> Cat and kitten, which is beautiful because they are the same kind of thing. They should be spelled the same way, but the rule applies. So this C followed by an A can make the K sound because it's not E, I, or Y, but we couldn't do it here because if we put a C here to follow cat, it would say sitten. Yeah. So good illustration and you can probably find others to cement this in kids' mind. One of the words that came up in the previous group that I just did was the word kangaroo and why that's a K. And we don't know the answer, but one of the theories that we put forward and we put on the wonder wall is, is it because it's an aboriginal word mm -hmm. or maybe it has an origin that lends mm -hmm. itself another way. So we, again, then come back to meaning. Uh, the one of the final pieces of the theme, I've got one more little bit, but one final piece then is to have kids practice applying the C or the K for the letter, for the sound K. And that is, uh, he's given you this great <coughs> worksheet at the back. Um, take one of the words one at a time, make sure that the kids know what the sound is. This one especially, you could see them saying sheep or something, <laughs> but we're not representing the, the clover with a sh, it is a K sound. So make sure all the words can be read, and then they need to decide which one will replace it based on these rules. Mm -hmm. For the younger kids, maybe you lead them through one or two and they practice with one or two. For the older kids, you could toss it out as an assessment and see what you get back. Mm -hmm. You could also start with this and then go into your inquiry. Well, why? Mm -hmm. Why is that happening? And generate some ideas. So just, just some things. Um, the last thing he does in the theme that I didn't really touch on with the first group and then we decided I should 
This is covered in much more depth later, so I don't know that you have to do it this week, but in case it comes up or for your own information, the digraph CK, when does that come into play? And basically, a base word which has only one vowel letter and whose last letter is K must have a letter between that single vowel letter and the final K. If there isn't one between the final, sorry, if there isn't one between the vowel letter and the final K, then write CK instead. And here are some illustrations. So, the final letter is K here, and this is a, va this is a vowel letter, but there's a letter between them. This is a vowel letter, there's a letter between them. So this doesn't get a C. This one could say lock without the C, but it can't because of the vowel letter. There has to be one between, so the C is added on. And this goes much more in depth later, so you don't have to do anything with it, but in case it comes up, you can play with this. And this was his little diagram that showed it. Okay? All right, I'm going to turn off the thing because I've run out of